thousands. I've probably cleaned up close to three or four hundred different scenes where people have disemboweled themselves, put a knife in their stomach and, and cut themselves open while they're alive. Even one gentleman uh, decided to take some scissors and cut his intestines while he'd done it and throw them in the bath. So I started window cleaning just as a lifestyle choice really. Um, I could earn a, a few hundred pounds a day and then uh, work a couple of days a week and then um, just do what I wanted to do the other days. And um, one of the ladies who I cleaned her windows for, she asked me whether we would clean one of her properties where someone had been in for 10 years and no one had been able to go and see this person. It was a warden assisted flat, but it was so bad, the state of it, that no one would go in. In what way was it bad? So when we opened the door, the, the floor was kind of moving with fleas. Um, that was the first thing, which we'd not really encountered. So um, we had to deal with that, um, get some specialist chemicals to deal with it. And then I went into the bathroom. One of the lads who worked for me went into the kitchen. Um, the bath I was dealing with was completely full of feces, right to the top, and the toilet was as well. And um, he was in the kitchen, which was also in a terrible state. The third lad that was with us threw up in his face mask um, and nearly choked, so we had to rip his mask off and he went and sat in the van. And then we carried on cleaning it. And um, yeah, so we, we kind of got it, all of that muck, body fluid, 10 years of grot and grime, cleaned it all up and, and deodorized it. There's some people who won't do it for anything, all the money in the world, you know. There's people who are scared of blood and scared of needles and all that goes with it, but most people have got a threshold that as long as you give them enough money for it, they'll, they'll do it. How much did they pay you for the house? Yeah, so she came in um, after we'd finished and she was like overjoyed. So we said, Look, it's £2,000, OK? And she was like, yeah, fine, wrote us a cheque there and then for it. And I was kind of 20 years old and just thought, I've earned two grand, less 300 quid to pay one of the lads. So 1,700 quid for a day's work, I'm not going to look back. But to be honest with you, I, I, really, I just saw pound signs instead of seeing anything else. I just saw, so actually if we can solve this problem, what can we charge? And, and that's how it started. We realised if we were going to go to local authorities, police, undertakers, and offer them our services, that we'd have to have something to, to kind of um, shore us up or to be recognised that we knew what we were doing. I went to um, a college in, in Birmingham to learn how to clean crime scenes which was hilarious because it was just a, a, a lady in a mini skirt and high heels that poured some tomato sauce on a desk. Uh, we learned how to do that, how to clean that up, and um, walked away with a certificate saying that we were crime scene cleaners. The first job that came in was about 10 miles from where I live, and it was a solicitor that asked for our help. Um, there was a property where a, a gentleman had passed away, and he'd been there for eight weeks, and his dog had eaten his face and his leg. Um, and we were faced with loads of weird things. So I opened the door initially and a swarm of blue bottles flew past me and I had no idea whether that would, you know, they would carry any pathogen. Um, didn't know whether I should have killed them before I let them out. Um, the smell was horrendous. Um, and the masks we had at the time weren't very good. But you could smell this horrible um, decomposed Odor. And it was nothing like dead animals. It was nothing like I'd been used to in the past. The gentleman, had, had I think, had fallen off of a sofa um, and uh, died on the sofa or died on the floor. Um, and we could see this big black outline. So it's all black body fat. So the body kind of initially blows and then bursts and then all that fluid comes out. So the heavier the person, the more body fat that comes out of the person. His body fat decomposed through the wooden floor, through the carpet into the wooden floor and then into the concrete. So it took me about three hours to, to get his body fat out of the concrete. And then we realised that there was a shop underneath. So we went round the other way and came in through the roadway and it was a clothes shop. And we said to the lady who was running it, did she know that uh, she had any experience with bad smells? And she said, oh, I think there's a dead rat in yeah, above the, the ceiling because maggots keep falling in to the changing rooms. Um, and we were like, uh, really sorry, it's not, it's not a dead rat. Someone's actually passed away up there. And then she kind of screamed and uh, she, she didn't realise what was going on. And so, so that was a, kind of a strange one. But it was great for us because we get two places to clean up. We get the shop and the flat. So, yeah, it was all a, all a bit of a learning curve, but nothing like that desk with the 
tomato sauce on it at all. What does a, a, a decomposing body smell like? The smell is a very strong ammonia smell. Um, if you think of leaving a chicken breast in a fridge that doesn't work for a few weeks, it's kind of that, but kind of times 10. Um, I, I, when I was in um, South America a few years ago, somebody kindly gave me, we were in a Thai restaurant, gave me some rotting Thai fish uh, sauce. And it's the first time I've ever kind of linked the smell with anything horrendous when I've eaten something. And, and that reminded me very much of, of, of it. So that a decomposed fish, bizarrely, was very similar to a, to a decomposed body. But again, not the same. What's, what's the most disgusting thing you've ever seen? Probably the worst thing I've done was um, I had a phone call um, from our local police authority to go to a property where a gentleman had, had died um, and he was a hoarder. So they opened the front door and it was just like a, a tunnel. There was a suitcase and another suitcase and, that, and everything else just boxes. So I kind of crawled in and went up and got to a door and I couldn't get through the door. So I came back and said, I, I, and I was kind of naive to what was going on a little. Um, and then they ended up breaking the window. So by this point there was about 80 people watching from this council estate um, and as soon as they broke the window the smell everybody just kind of ran into their houses um, so the fire brigade took the window out and um, then all of the um, items that he'd hoarded had fallen on top of him so we had to uncover them for the scenes of crimes officer to come and take a photo of the body um, so that was not very often do we go then the, the body is still there but with this situation it was so we uncovered everything and um, sadly, I, I moved a bag and the gentleman's foot came off and I had to put that back to, for them to take a photograph. And then when we got down to the body, then the scenes of crimes officer could come in and take a photograph. And bizarrely, they had to have two doctors come in to pronounce that, that the person was actually dead, um, even though they'd been there for eight, ten weeks. Um, and they decomposed. They were on about four or five mattresses that the body was and it had gone through about three of them. So it was that was pretty horrendous um, from a visual smell whole kind of situation. In fact, I had two friends that were helping me. We were supposed to be going fishing that day, and um, and I had to put the fishing trip off because, but this job came in, and um, so so both my friends came with me so that we could get it done quickly so we could go fishing, and um, they'd never seen anything like it before. One of the the lads, his wife is a vegetarian, and um, it was the first time <laughs> that she'd cooked him meat. And she did it, did him a leg of lamb, and he got home to this leg of lamb, and he said, "I just can't eat it." And it was just <laughs> I felt so sorry for for what I kind of impacted him with. Well, what's what's a normal day in the life of a crime scene cleaner? For day to day, you never know what's going to happen when the phone rings. It could be something simple where somebody has uh, has taken an overdose and there's very little to clean. Uh, it could be where somebody has committed suicide, um, and we've had some horrific situations. I've probably cleaned up close to three or four hundred different scenes where people have disemboweled themselves, put a knife in their stomach and, and kept themselves open while they're alive. Even one gentleman uh, decided to take some scissors and cut his intestines while he'd done it and throw them in the bath. Um, we've had situations where people have killed themselves with a shotgun in a conservatory so their whole head has gone through a polycarbonate roof um, all over the ceiling and all over the, the, the room. Some are outside in piggeries and dairies and most farmers have got a shotgun so it happens quite a lot on farms. Um, we've had lots of other situations as well where there's been crimes committed where people have killed their partners or people have, um, have, have just murdered people to have to go to a family home and clean up after that kind of is, is really sensitive and difficult. I've just wanted to make the place better for people. And when you know the story, it gets quite sad sometimes. Um, we, we very often come across suicide notes that are left and you can then grasp what's happened. Some are kind of, you know, if a, a father has lost custody of his son and he's committed suicide, then that has an impact because I've got children and I don't know how I would feel if that happened to me. One of the first ones that kind of got me, um, I don't know if it's emotionally or, or mentally really, um, but we went to uh, Bournemouth and a, a, a chap had bludgeoned two professional people. Uh, the gentleman had bludgeoned his wife to death and it was so violent, there was literally blood everywhere. 
I mean, you, you could open a drawer and there was blood in, in with the cutlery. And then if you looked underneath the drawer, there was blood underneath the drawer. Um, it was even in the washing machine. It had gone through the washing machine seal, um, in the lights, on the lights, everywhere. It was kind of this fine mist. And so you realise how violent it had been. But then the police officer told us that the lady had survived for three days on the floor and then her neighbour found her and she died on the way to hospital. And that was kind of, that was really sad that that had happened. But also I I married and I've had an argument with my wife and get to that point where you just walk out and come back an hour later and say sorry. But for someone to not do that and flip and kill someone, I think someone's life, that kind of messed me up a bit. You, you see so much of the darkness of humanity. That leave a lasting impact on how you think about people? I suppose I would love to say that I, I, I'm a real positive person. I would love to say that society is getting better and better. And I know there's people out there who really think that, um, but they probably have never done what we do. I've never seen such an increase in drug abuse, you know, since we started this 20 years ago. Um, we were maybe getting one needle pick every two or three weeks. Now we get five or six a day. Um, we get loads of suicides, loads of murders. I think suicide now is the biggest killer of men under the age of 30, which is a horrific situation. Um, people go to, to colleges and universities and they don't realise why the windows only open four inches. It's because before they did that, we were going there cleaning up loads of suicides where people have jumped out of buildings. Uh, it makes me want to be a better person, I think, with my family and with my friends and make sure that, that I'm not sucked into that spiral, I think. Do you love the job? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I get incredibly bored incredibly quickly. So I, even if I'm working on one building for more than a couple of days, I can't cope with it. I need to get out and change my, my kind of surroundings. And so this job changes every single day. I love that about it. I love I love that we help families. I love that we help make things better. I love that we undo problems for people. But I really, really love that I never know what we're going to be doing the next day or what I'm going to be dealing with. I knew when PE or something was going to come up, I knew that, you know, uh, the girls were going to start, you know. I wasn't allowed to get changed with them in their changing room or anything. Um, because even though, like, I say clitoris, I say that loosely. Uh, my clitoris is basically like a small dick, 